Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar today on business metrics for internal communications. I've got Peter Hoffman sitting right here next to me just waiting to go. Um, before we start, I'm just going to run you through a few housekeeping tips just to make the afternoon go smoother. The slides that you see and the recording of the entire webinar will be available to you on our SlideShare page as well as our YouTube channel and we'll email you links to these um, within the week. When the webinar finishes, there'll be a survey that pops up and if you could just give this a few minutes of your time to tell us what you thought or, and, and give us your feedback, we would appreciate that very much. As you listen to Peter speaking, you might have questions that you want to ask him. If you look at the bottom right um, of your control box, you'll see a questions box and this is where you can communicate with Peter. Um, if you type your questions in there, he will give time at the end to answer them. So without any further delay, I will hand you over now to Peter. Thank you very much for coming. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Um, yes, my name is Peter Hoffman. I'm, I'm a director of MFX Options and Solutions. We're based in South Africa, and we primarily provide strategic consulting services to business clients. Amongst others, that includes the preparation and implementation of internal communication strategies. Now, within the area of internal communications, one always asks the question, well, what is the value of internal communications in any business? And I'd like to start off with having a look at the function that internal communication employees play. Here we've got a graphic, and the graphic, which is based on a little bit of research that comes from the UK, has a look at five key areas. And as you can see on the graph, looking from the left across to the right, the primary focus of internal communications is around internal communications helping employees in that business understand what the business is all about. It is primarily an operational focus, looking at the day-to-day -day activities and having a look and saying, well, what do we do in each of the areas of our business? What does HR do? What does finance do? What do operations do? What does marketing do, etc.? Secondly, we have a look, and you can see there's quite a broad focus around internal communications being used as an internal public relations source. And the third one, which is going to be the focus of my chat today, is around internal communications making a strategic contribution to the business. Now, the difference between the first and the third is that in the beginning, I said that internal communications focus very heavily on helping people understand the operations. Now we're starting to talk about internal communications, helping the business drive its longer term strategies. And there's some fundamental differences between the operational focus and the strategic focus. And to get to the point of where we want to be with today's webinar and very briefly touching on, well, what, how do we measure the value of internal communications? We need to have a look at internal communications from a strategic perspective. Before I move along, I'd just like to touch quickly on the other three. Obviously, internal communications is there to support line managers. And I always purport that it's very important that internal communications don't see themselves as a division or a department in themselves, but rather see themselves as a support service that stretches and spans the entire business. They are there to ensure that all line managers are supported in ensuring that they achieve and maximize the benefit they get out of the activities that they have. Internal communications, of course, is also a very good vehicle for upward communication in a business, and it helps to establish the platforms and the frameworks and the basis where employees are able to voice their opinions, their concerns through channels 
to the higher levels and up to executive management. And then lastly, risk management. Why is risk management important? It's important because risk ties in integrally with business strategy. And to formulate its strategies, a business needs to understand its risk environment. I'm going to give a very simple example. A, we, I think most people understand the impact that was felt by business in 2008, 2009 with the global economic meltdown. Now that is a very good example of risk and a lot of businesses failed to adequately address the risks that they were faced and that influenced their ability to implement good strategies. Now what can internal communications do and how can they create value? Well, they create value by helping employees understand, well, what is the business risk environment look like? And how do those risks influence our business being able to achieve its strategy? Looking at internal communications and the business strategy, very quickly, a few ca characteristics around the strategy. Firstly, strategy is concerned with the scope of activities in a business. What is it that the business does? What do they produce? What service do they provide? And internal communications plays a key role in helping drive a deeper understanding within the employee base around that scope. It's also around making sure that the activities of the business match with the environment that it's operating in. If, for example, we're operating in a market where there is a vast levels of technological development, then we need to match our strategies with that. Put a step further, if we look at internal communications, we are currently in an environment where communication is moving from a top-down approach to an organizational engagement focused approach. We have social technology coming into our environments. It's using the environment or adapting to the environment to make sure that the strategy meets the environmental requirements. Then strategy is around matching the activities of the business with the resource capabilities that it has. We can only do what we can do based on the skills base, the financial resources, etc. that we have. So strategies need to align with the capabilities of resources. Strategy invariably has major implications on resources, implying that if we have a strategy to grow our business, it implies that our employee base will grow. It implies that we will need more financial resources to grow our business. And likewise, if we were right-sizing a business, it would have the, 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 the opposite effect. So it's understanding how longer-term strategy drives changes in our resource base. Strategy also affects operational decisions. And to put that in perspective, the simplest example, if we had a strategy that was focused on developing a technological skills base, then I would accept that within the training and development environment, the training and development budget would focus on the development of technological skill. And you may find that at an operational level, there is a move away from training in some areas toward another area to ensure that you have the ability to meet this longer term objective. Of course, we need to have a look at what the values and expectations of stakeholders are, specifically those that have power, people that have the ability to influence decisions. And then lastly, internal communications within the business strategy environment, we need to understand how it has the capacity to affect the long-term direction that an organization takes. Now we're in a changing environment and the practice of internal communications is changing. The ways of communication are very much in flux 
And corporate communications, as it's been known up to now, is moving away from the old, we communicate with you, the employee, to an organizational conversation environment, where we are looking at giving employees the ability to talk to the business as much as the business talks to employees. Organizational conversation. And internal communications is a key driver in able it, to drive and enable engagement with employees. And engagement with employees is necessary to ensure the ability to drive business strategy. So it improves the strategic al uh, alignment. Now there are four key steps to improving organizational conversation. It starts off with closing the gap, closing the gap between the employees and the management structures, allowing for that two-way dialogue, not only top-down, but also bottom-up and horizontal. It's also important to allow employees or engage employees in telling the story of the business. Bring the human aspect into internal communications because that is what drives engagement, motivation, and obviously supports the business achieving its objectives. And then lastly, it's important that we pursue a very clear agenda with internal communications. Internal communications is around sharing information with people or employees that instills a level of trust where the employees believe what is being told to them, that it establishes an environment where they fully understand the agenda of management with respect to the business and the way forward. Now, if we have a look at internal communications in terms of how effective it is, and now we come to the measurement aspect. Traditionally, businesses have looked at, in, at aspects like employee surveys to assess how effective communications is. There are other areas like exit interviews, internal reviews, and focus groups that also allow for the subjective input of individuals or groupings of people to view their, to express their views around the effectiveness of internal communications. To an extent, external auditors or internal auditors can also have a look at how effective IC is. And then the last one is the cost-benefit analysis. The difficulty with cost-benefit analysis is being able to quantify the benefits of internal communications. How do we put a value on what we've achieved out of internal communications? Very easy to determine the cost, not that easy to look at the benefits. So how do we measure? The starting point is to say, well, why do we want to measure value? What is the purpose of measuring value? And the purpose of measuring value is to ensure that we have a function an internal communications function that is appropriately focused and that is maximizing the benefit that we get in our business. The starting point is always a financial metric, a measurement that is financially based, return on investment as an example. So we'll look at cost, we'll try and quantify the benefit that we get out of the communications, and we'll create some form of return calculation, which is financial. But what's very important to look at is the non-financial metrics. So within a communications environment, what is our purpose in communications? Well, we're looking at engaging with employees, and we're trying to drive higher levels of engagement. So it, Example of a non-financial metric would be your employee engagement index. If you were to engage with employees on a regular basis and measure their levels of engagement, you could create an index which would allow you to see 
whether your communications are driving higher levels of engagement or whether they are not promoting those levels of engagement. And this is where trends in ESC being economic, social, environmental, or ESG, which adds the governance aspect, corporate social responsibility, CSR, those trends are driving towards measuring in a non-financial way. Another aspect to consider in measuring value is your external drivers. What are the issues outside of the business that are driving value within the business? Stakeholders also have an influence in terms of understanding, well, what do my stakeholders want from my business in terms of value? A very simple example of a stakeholder is an external customer. Now, the question is asked, does internal communications have an influence on customer satisfaction? And the answer is very clearly yes. Because if you have an engaged workforce, they promote higher levels of customer satisfaction. So therefore, the stakeholder view is one of looking from an all stakeholders' perspectives and saying which areas of stakeholder engagement are influenced by internal communications. When we have a look at internal communications, we also look from the customer's perspective, the internal customer's perspective. And there we have our sponsoring, contracting, consuming, and influencing customers. Very broadly, your sponsoring customer is the person or individual that looks at wanting to achieve something from internal communications. Your CEO could be the sponsor. A contracting customer is a customer that is wanting internal communications to serve a purpose. So if human resources looked at internal communications as a service provider for a survey, then human resources would be the contracting customer. Consuming customers, of course, the individuals that consume information in a business, and that's your employees. And very important, the influencing customer. That would be individuals within the business that have the capacity to influence the consuming customers. Management play a key role in helping to drive communications within a business environment. And I think it's important to understand that in a business, we cannot communicate one way to all audiences. So if we have a look at our hierarchical structure with a CEO at the top running all the way down to what I term general workers, we cannot focus a communication at all levels within the business in a single form. But what we can focus on is getting middle level and junior management to help drive messages through the business by ensuring that they engage with their employees. Also important to help drive information flow down the business, top down, bottom up, but also to ensure that we maintain horizontal flows of information. Looking further at creating value, and here I'm using a value chain approach to show value creation in a business. Our service departments are focused on trying to achieve goals. If we have a look at this value chain, it's split between a business's primary activities and its support activities. And the primary activities are the activities that create value in a business, how value gets created for a customer. And rather than use this simple value chain, I'm going to give an example. Here we have an example of a steel manufacturer at the top, one that provides niche products based on client orders. In other words, they operate on a pool basis. They wait for a customer order to come in, and then they manufacture specifically based on the customer's order. In the bottom one, we have a steel manufacturer that produces standard products that it pushes into the market. So we have a pull versus a push. 
And very broadly, you can see a few differences in the value chains. At the top, marketing becomes a key focus, purely because the business needs to market to customers to get orders, whereas at the bottom, sales becomes more important because it's pushing into the market. Another difference, which you can see highlighted in the red in the support area, whereas safety, health, and environment is a secondary or a support activity to the push manufacturer, quality is key to them because the customer has placed a specific order. Whereas in the bottom case where it's a standard product, quality becomes a support service. Now what does this have to do with communication? What's important to internal communications is to understand value creation in the business and to say how should we be focusing our messages within communications to help drive value creation. So in the top case, communications would be more focused on marketing and quality, whereas in the bottom case, they'd be more focused on the sales, uh, the cost effectiveness and ef operational efficiencies in the business. That's trying to highlight the difference. Here, very quickly, we have another example. I've compared Emirates Airlines with Fly Dubai. Emirates operating in a global market space, being very, very concerned about their reputation and, and marketing themselves against global airlines. Corporate, public, uh, corporate PR and marketing play a big role in the business. Whereas in Fly Dubai, where they focused on a regional market, they are not that concerned with the marketing aspect. Sales becomes more relevant to them, but operational efficiencies are key to ensure that they can maintain a lower cost base. So once again, purely looking at differences and understanding that internal communications need to focus their strategies and plans on ensuring that they, that they focus on the right aspects of the business when communicating with the audience. So what's important here? It's important that we look at building a strategic link from an internal communications perspective. The business at, its at a strategy level says, well, where is it we're going? We, we, we put together strategic plans that says, how are we going to get to where we want to go? And we make sure that we have systems and processes in place to help us achieve that strate those strategic plans. And that is in essence where the internal communication framework comes in. Internal communications consists of systems and processes to help drive achieving strategic objectives. And here manage, we need to have a look at what management and monitoring structures we have in place within internal communications to help drive strategy. In summary, it's very difficult to pinpoint exact measurables within any business to say this is how you measure value. But what we need to look at is we need to look at the big picture. We need to understand who our customers are, who our stakeholders are. And when I talk of customers, I talk of internal customers as well. We then say, well, what are the key messages that we need to send to our target audiences? Make sure that we align our internal communication strategy with a business strategy. Focus our strategy on driving messages that help achieve business strategic objectives. We need to create a common language and understanding around what internal communications is and how it supports the business. Break away from this overhead mentality that exists where people begin to understand that internal communications is a value creating function rather than a mere cost or overhead. And when we look at this in the end, we need to come up with integrated measurables. And integrated implies not that we measure internal communications internally, 
but that we measure communications in terms of its impact on other areas in the business. The example I've used already, how well have we worked on improving skills and knowledge to drive improved customer satisfaction? How well have we improved our employee engagement? And of course, those need to focus around financial and non-financial aspects. So that in brief is a very broad overview of an approach towards looking at how we can fundamentally value internal communications. I hope that that's been of value and I welcome any questions at this point from the audience. Ah, here we have a question and the question is, can I suggest strategies to improve internal communications? Uh, it's a very broad question and I'm going to answer it in a very broad way. Internal communications, as I've said before, is generally seen very much as an operational aspect of the business. So the starting point is to say we need to get internal communications elevated to a strategic level. And the key in strategic internal or getting it to a strategic level is ensuring that our internal communication strategy is aligned with our business strategy. If I took an example, if the business had a strategic objective of driving growth through getting a higher level of market share, then my communication strategy would be focused on sharing key messages with the business around its achieving its growth objective. So that staff or employees are constantly aware of how they can make and influence that outcome. Very broad answer. Here I have another question. How do we get senior management to buy in to the importance of internal communications? Again, a, a very difficult question to answer and I'm going to give a very broad answer. The, the starting point is to have a look at the culture that exists within the business. Is the culture conducive to seeing internal communications as a strategic enabler? And if the culture isn't conducive, the starting point is to progressively drive a change in the mindset of the senior managers. How do we do that? We do it by finding ways in which we can show the measurable effect, positive effect of internal communications within a business environment. I could go as far as giving you an example on that. If safety was a key issue in your business and you had a look across your business units and identified a business unit that had a weaker safety record, one could consult with that manager and drive a communications campaign within the environment around safety and then use the positive outcome through a better safety record 
as a way in showing your executive structure, your top management, that communications has made a meaningful impact on the business. And progressively through showing successes, you will have management buy-in. Last point I'd like to make on senior management buy-in, the starting point has to be the CEO. If the CEO doesn't buy in, you won't progress below that level. I hope that addresses that question uh, well enough. Here we have another question. The question is, without direct clear finance input from internal communications, the management will still see IC as a burden. Ah, that would be a statement rather than a question. What are my thoughts on that? Without direct, clear finance input. I trust that what the statement is saying that is if internal communications impact is not shown in financial terms, then it will still be seen as a burden and therefore it's necessary that it be reflected in financial terms. Um, yes, when we look at measurables, you'll recall I spoke about having financial and non-financial measurables. So within internal communications, it is important to come up with quantifiable benefits. If we were engaging with employees, for example, our employee engagement index that we establish will be a non-financial measurable. But in consultation with human resources, maybe, we will agree that any movement in or any improvement in engagement would imply a direct influence on employee motivation, hence productivity, and that can be equated to a value because more productive employees cost or are more cost effective employees. So in collaboration with business, financial metrics can be established for internal communications that can be used to veer away from the situation where IC is seen as a cost or a burden. I hope that answers that question sufficiently. We have another question. Do we measure internal communications annually? In broad terms, I'd like to I'd, I'd like to say it depends on the organization that we're operating in. Measurement is something that needs input from people. Uh, yes, to an extent we can have systems that measure, but invariably it requires resources. And the size of an organization will influence whether you have resources available to measure. The complexity of an organization will influence you. So there are a lot of dependence, but in broad terms, my answer would be that we need to progress to a point where internal communications is measured on an ongoing basis and not on a once-off annual basis. I hope that answers that question. Then I have another point made that says, having come back to this concept, we were talking about uh, employee engagement. It's, a, it's commented that employee engagement takes time. Improvement in engagement takes time to result in or to show meaningful business benefit. And the comment is made that management is not patient enough. Now, there, I would agree that in a lot of cases, management are not patient. But I'd like to go back a step to the points I made around developing strategy for internal communications that is integrally related to the business strategy. 
if internal communications collaborate with business in compiling strategy, there will be a clear understanding of how internal communications will drive value, not in a short term only, but also over the longer term. And that would hopefully address the issue of management not being patient. I hope that covers that point. Here we have another question, and the question is, do we need to have senior management involved in defining the internal communications strategy? And that would include things like organizing workshops, etc. Fundamentally, the business establishes the business strategy at the highest level through the executive. And all of the strategies that fall below that, the functional level strategies, of which internal communications is one, all need to be aligned with the corporate strategy. Buy-in from management in all strategies is of utmost importance. So whilst management don't need to be involved in defining the strategy. Internal communications are experts in their own field. They need to determine how internal communications can strategize to drive business benefit. But what is critical is that internal communications get buy-in from management for their strategy. So no, management don't define, but management need to agree and and buy in to the internal communication strategy. All right, it doesn't look like we have any more questions at this point. Um, I'd like to say thank you very, very much for, for taking time out and listening to me. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. I hope that it has uh, provided you with some insight into the aspect of the value of internal communications. Thank you very much. I have a comment. Great webinar. I really appreciate. And... Uh, I look forward to catching up with you all again in the near future on another webinar. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Uh,